In April of 2005, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission adopted hunting regulations for some Texas counties that include antler restrictions for bucks. The primary objective that TPWD hopes to achieve with this regulation is to improve the age structure of the buck herd. If hunters do not harvest deer until they have a 13-inch inside spread, except for those with an unbranched antler, deer can make it into the older age classes. This will result in a better balanced and natural deer herd with mature bucks doing most of the breeding. Properties that have been issued Level 2 or Level 3 managed lands deer permits will be exempt from this regulation because they are already operating with restrictive harvest guidelines as prescribed in their wildlife management plan. Basically, this antler restriction regulation changes the definition of a legal buck deer. With this regulation, a buck deer must have a hardened antler protruding through the skin. And in addition, a legal buck must meet one of two other criteria. It must have at least one unbranched antler or an inside spread measurement between main beams of 13 inches or greater. We will run through a series of sketches clearly showing each of the two criteria in the regulation. This is a legal deer because it has at least one unbranched antler. In fact, it has two unbranched antlers. Always be careful to look for hidden points. This is a legal deer because it has at least one unbranched antler. This is a legal deer because it has an inside spread of 13 inches or greater. This deer is not legal because it meets none of the criteria. It should be mentioned here that a violation of this regulation is a Class C Parks and Wildlife misdemeanor. Persons convicted of this violation are subject to a fine of up to $500 and restitution for the illegally taken game. For clarification, a point is a projection that extends at least one inch from the edge of a main beam or another time. The tip of the main beam is also a point. This definition of a point can be used in determining a legal deer when you are looking for a buck with an unbranched antler. The second criteria requires that the hunter be able to estimate the inside spread between the main beams. This is what concerns hunters most, being able to determine if a deer has a 13-inch inside spread. And that is much of what this video is intended to accomplish. In essence, all buck deer are carrying a measuring stick on their head. This slide shows a deer that has exactly a 13-inch inside spread. Additionally, you can tell from the lines that are inserted that the ear tip to ear tip width is also 13 inches. Hunters can utilize this guide if they are able to view the buck with the ears in the alert position, looking toward them. An essential tool for determining antler spread is a good set of binoculars, a spotting scope, or at the very least, a good rifle scope. Good optics can help a hunter see what the naked eye can't. We're going to run through a series of images and explain how you would evaluate each buck. Please understand that not every buck is going to give you a chance to get a good look. When in doubt, don't shoot. This deer is legal because it has at least one unbranched antler. In fact, it has two unbranched antlers. Remember, you may want to wait for a side view to be absolutely sure the antlers are unbranched. Here is a side view of the same deer. Notice a side view is all that is necessary to make the call. The left antler is unbranched. An unbranched antler on one side makes this deer legal. Same here, one unbranched antler makes this deer legal. Now we'll look at some animals that are illegal to shoot. This deer is possibly unbranched, but better get a closer look with binoculars or a spotting scope. Optics are needed to see the points that make the deer illegal. 
points and a less than 13 inch spread make the deer illegal. But without optics, you probably couldn't tell. This deer is illegal. By using the ears as a guide, you can tell it obviously has less than a 13 inch inside spread. Same here, branched and less than a 13 inch spread. What about this one? He is a little closer than the previous two, but looks to be less than 13 inches wide judging by the ears. Better get the binoculars and get a closer look. These lines indicate that the inside spread is narrower than the alert ear tips. That is less than 13 inches, making this deer illegal. How about this one? Obviously illegal. Can you tell from this distance if this deer is a legal deer? Better get a closer look. A closer look through optics shows points, making this deer illegal. The deer on the right is obviously illegal. The spread is less than 13 inches. The deer on the left is impossible to call from this picture since its ears need to be in the alert position. close, but the inside spread is just under 13 inches, making this deer illegal. This deer appears close at first glance, but the lines indicate the inside spread is greater than the ears, making this deer legal. Still close, but when in doubt, don't shoot. If the ears are not in the alert, forward position, they can't be used as a judge. Still too close to call. Better not shoot under these circumstances. Close. This deer is probably legal. But again, if in doubt, don't shoot. Let's take a closer look with binoculars. What do you think? Sure, he is legal. The following deer are legal but a close call in some instances. Once you've learned to judge antler spread utilizing the ear tip to ear tip technique, you will recognize these deer as legal. It should be obvious that this deer is legal. So is this one. This deer is legal as well. Both of these deer are obviously wider than 13 inches. This deer is obviously legal. This is a don't shoot situation. Visibility is limited and it's not a good ethical shot. Never attempt to judge a deer's spread when they're walking away. They usually have their ears back, so judging antler spread is impossible. Here the hunter should wait for a better view to determine spread, such as when the deer is looking directly at the shooter. At first, this deer appears to be legal, but the hunter should wait for both ears to be in the alert position before making the call. Based on this view, you cannot make an informed decision. You are going to have to look at deer closely before deciding to shoot or not. Hopefully these examples will help you determine what is a legal buck. Again, the goal of this regulation is to improve the age structure of the buck herd. This regulation is not a cure-all for deer management problems in the area. This regulation will only allow young bucks to get older. However, if habitat conditions are poor, fawning rates will be low and there will be few young bucks to protect. Areas that have a high percentage of land cleared for improved pasture will see little improvement because of the low productivity of these lands. Landowners that continue to protect and enhance native habitats will reap the rewards of this regulation and good management. You might want to review the examples until you feel comfortable judging deer by these criteria.